Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to uh, get started in just a couple seconds. Today's topic is hiring and onboarding in the COVID era. So if you're joining us, I'm assuming that you are in a position to hire and onboard your employees at your company. So we're really grateful that you tuned in today for this conversation uh, with my colleagues and friends here at Dominion Payroll. So as we're, we're waiting for the last couple people to filter in, I will say hi to Megan and Cece. Hi, Megan and Cece. How are you guys today? Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's exciting. I know you guys are, I know Cece's been on one of these before, but it's been a long time. I know. I kind of feel like I'm at like the back of the beginning of COVID being mm. on here with you. Don't <laughs> say it. That's, I know. That was a long, uh, unfortunately, that was a long time ago. It's been 11 months almost to the day uh, since this whole thing started. So um, I'm grateful for you guys to take time out of what I know are very busy schedules to chat with me today. And in full disclosure, Megan and Cece and I all work in the same department uh, in the HR department here at Dominion Payroll. Uh, but we are, uh, we, our roles are a little different. So I am in charge of HR for clients on a consulting basis or add-on service basis. And then Megan and Cece are in charge of HR for uh, our internal employees. So that means a whole lot of different things. They wear many, many hats, but the hat we're going to ask them to wear today is their recruiting hat. And Megan's been uh, with the company, gosh, I don't even know how long now, Megan, several years. Uh -huh. Yeah, two and a half years now. Okay. And mm -hmm. so I know hiring and onboarding is something that you have been working very closely with and and you've seen it evolve and change even before COVID and then COVID came and it evolved and changed even more. So mm -hmm. looking forward to hearing your perspective today. And then Cece has been with us for, I think, a year, a little over a year now um, and has migrated from a different department into this space. Um, and Cece, you are, you, you spend almost 100% of your time recruiting, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. So she's been, and you've been in this role for a couple months now. Um, so you, you know, there hasn't been a time when you haven't been recruiting during COVID. So, um, so that's our goal today is to, to um, let these ladies tell us about their experience with hiring. And, and hopefully if you're on the call today, your company is in a position to do some hiring. Um, it's been a very strange 11 months. And um, you know we are very lucky at Dominion Payroll to be able to keep continue to hire. We, did, we weren't hiring a lot at the very beginning of COVID, I don't think, but um, towards the latter half of 2020, we were able to grow and add to our team uh, in several different cities. So these ladies also not only are in charge of um, the team here in Richmond, but we have offices in Charlotte, Nashville, Tampa, Dallas, and now Louisville. So um, it just, it's, it's a wonderful thing to grow like that, but it also makes their job a bit more complicated. So mm -hmm. that said, let's dive in. Oh, a couple housekeeping notes real quick. If you have a question, uh, please key it into the Q&A section of the chat, or excuse me, on your screen today, uh, and avoid the chat. The Q&A section allows us to keep your questions even after the webinar closes and the chat does not. So key in your question at any time during our presentation. We are, um, we'll answer them as they come in or at the end, depending on what your question is. And, um, it can be on you know, this topic. If you have something else you wanna ask about in the HR world, that's fine too. And we'll uh, do our very best to answer them. We don't have a terribly long deck today. Uh, yesterday, I promised people that we would end in half an hour and we took a full hour. So you just never know. Um, but we do have some really interesting, interesting um, thoughts to share with you. And we also wanna hear from you if you have something that you're doing in terms in the hiring and onboarding and engagement space that you'd like to share that's working, we are all ears. This is a two-way uh, conversational street. So it doesn't have to be a question in the Q&A. You could also put in a comment or an anecdote and we would love to read that to the rest of our listeners. 
Uh, Megan, Cece, anything else to add before we dive in? I don't think so. I'm excited. And, you know, just to reiterate what you said, please, yeah, send in. If you guys are doing something different that, you know, we haven't mentioned, please share your ideas. Um, you know, Cece and I are constantly talking and constantly revamping the way we're recruiting and onboarding. So, um, you know, time is still changing and, you know, we're um, always just trying to make it better and revamp. So always love new ideas. So please, please share. We would love to, to see what everybody else is doing as well. Definitely. Absolutely. Thank you, Megan. All right. So it goes without saying that times are a little different right now. And um, so far, 2021 is we're still in the COVID era. And, you know, we hope that this year we can get out of this pandemic, but right now we're still in it. And so um, safety precautions are still in place. So you know, there could be a variety of, of things that you're wrestling with in your company. You know, certainly uncertainty about the future has been, you know, top of mind for all of us in the last 11 months, um, even more so than before. So, um, you know, should we hire at all? And, and what does growth look like for us right now? We've got, of course, the virtual slash remote uh, situation for both, you know, changes things for interviewing, for assessing the right fit. Uh, maybe assessing skills, and then of course the hiring process and making sure all of that paperwork is, um, you know, completed and onboarded. And then once they are hired, are they going to work from home? Or then how's that look? Are they going to work in the office? And what does that look like? What's the, what are the health and safety protocols that you're going to communicate or not to your new employee? Um, you know, what kinds of how are you going to answer any hard questions that they might have around COVID safety protocols? Uh, and then once they're on board, once they've signed on, what is onboarding and orientation look like? It's probably not going to be like it looked um, in 2019. Um, it probably will look a little different, maybe have a hybrid component or a fully digital component. Um, how do you socialize that person to the rest of the team when everybody's at home? Um, and how do you make them feel welcome? How do you let them know where their support network is and all that good stuff, um, which just might look a little different these days. And then once they're on board, how do you keep them engaged? How do you keep them feeling like part of the team? And um, like I said, supported and you know have, have their questions answered. So I know that Megan and Cece have been, um, gosh, I mean, we've hired, I don't even know where the numbers are right now, but just in the last couple of months, we've hired maybe what, 10, 15 people? Um, Probably, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, even within like the last year, you know, we've, you know, like you touched on earlier, we've been fortunate to um, continue to hire and, and grow even through COVID. So I think, you know, from, we probably started rehiring, you know, springtime last year and within this last year, I've probably brought on, you know, an additional 40, 40 people. So, and, you know, it's, it's changed throughout, you know, the months of, of how we started, you know, bringing on somebody back in, you know, May, June versus now. So we've learned a lot. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, what this sort of this, this first piece here, I mean, we had a lot of uncertainty at Dominion Payroll this year, of course, um, you know, in full disclosure, we are a payroll company. So if companies are downsizing, that affects our bottom line. So, you know, a lot of this, our, our growth decisions were, um, you know, we had to, really put a lot of thought into it. And, you know, should we hire folks? Um, is this the right time? You know, do, is our, how do our current employees feel? Um, you know, your business might have rely on temporary employees versus permanent, um, you know, or, or part-time folks. So that could be something that's a little different for you and, and your uh, organization. Uh, do you wanna hire from within? Is that an, an easier play for you right now? Um, or, um, you know, have you downsized to the point where you just are sort of scared to, to upsize because you don't know what's going to happen? Um, you know, how do we and how do we um, continue to pursue diversity, equity and inclusion in this weird world where we're just trying to keep the lights on and the revenue coming in? Is that something that we should put on the back burner right now or is it still something that we should consider? And then when we, if you are working remotely, if your team is working remotely, when you return to the office, what will that look like? And will the new hires be um, 
will that be a good time for any new hires to be introduced, even though they might have been introduced already, maybe it's a time to do it in person. Um, do you guys have any comments about, you know, your experience in the last um, several months around sort of the, the decision making about around these bullet points or even one that I might not have put in here? Um, I think you touched on um, really a lot of good points, um, especially hiring internally versus externally. Um, I think that's something that Megan and I have agreed on, especially for the last um, few months, is that we do, you know, open um, all of our posi positions internally for a week first. Um, and, you know, I think that it's important that you kind of mentioned and bolded how do our current employees feel, um, especially right now, making sure that employees, um, you know, that have already been with Dominion Payroll are still feeling like they're heard. Um, you know, obviously we've already touched on, we have been fortunate and have continued growing and, you know, bringing on new people and that's great, but making sure that our current employees are still feeling like they have opportunity to grow and to apply to the positions that we are opening um, is something that we've really tried, especially since we haven't been in the office, um, you know, to talk about things in person, to send out emails when we have new um, positions opening, just so that everybody stays aware of the ways that we're growing. Because again, I feel like in the past, it's been something that's probably talked about on a regular basis. And, you know, there's always like the word on the street in the office when you're walking around and seeing people. But since we're not doing that right now, you know, just making sure that your current employees really do still feel heard and like that they have opportunities um, as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I know that we don't hire temporary folks, um, at least I don't think that we do, but it could be an option for people if you're really just not sure what, if you're going like maybe month by month or quarter by quarter, uh, even here in 2021, or, or trying to, to make up for some lost ground in 2020, you know, it could be that you you have a seasonal workforce or, you know, part you bring on someone part time and you have a frank discussion with them about, hey, you know what, we're, we're sort of, we're kind of coming out of the, the, the there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We're getting closer to it, but we can only offer you part-time work right now. But the idea is to grow you and you know get this position back up to a full-time position. And um, I think that would you know that's a real viable option. And there's people out there who would I think you know being being open uh, with with that type of um, oh, sorry here's a cat um, <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> um, you know, just trying to be open with people. I mean, everybody knows that we're in the middle of a pandemic and um, if you if you wanna grow, but you wanna grow responsibly, then I think you could be open with with candidates about that. And, and, if, and if it doesn't work for them at part-time, then it, you know, it doesn't work, but you know, you can get creative with those, with those um, staffing solutions right now. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Just being transparent, you know, with our current employees and, you know, even if, you know, you are hiring externally, um, you know, being transparent of where you are. Everybody's going through very similar things right now. We're all in a pandemic. We're all living in this world that we, you know, we're not used to. Um, so I think being transparent, all candidates will absolutely appreciate that. And, um, and, I, and I think you're right, Leslie. I think a lot of people right now are more open to, you know, a part-time opportunity or, you know, a temporary or contract um, position. And the worst that happens is that candidate says no, right? You know, that, that they're not. And, um, but I think that there are a lot more people now that are, are more willing to do that type of work right now. Yeah, good point. It's a very different, um, it's a very different time. It's just a strange economy right now. And, and um, you know, like I said, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but there's also a, still a, a, so many more people in unemployment than we need, than we want. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen with the stimulus package that's making its way through the Senate right now. So we'll have to see what that looks like as well in terms of the unemployment stimulus and people making decisions whether or not to actually pursue work or to, um, to get that extra stimulus money. All right, I'm going to move on to the next point, which is about the actual process of recruiting, interviewing, and hiring in this environment. And again, everybody's different. You know, here at Dominion Payroll, we, um, you know, we have a, 
we don't have mo most of our workforce is working remotely. There's still some hybrid situations going on, but we also have offices in other states. And so obviously we're not, these ladies aren't traveling to Charlotte and Nashville. They're doing everything virtually. So tell us, Megan and Cece, how has the recruitment process changed during COVID? How has it maybe stayed the same? Are the candidates asking different questions? Are we asking different questions? What's, what's it look like out there now? Um, I can start if you want, Megan, um, and I guess I'll start with um, some of the questions. Um, that's what I have the most um, experience with is um, obviously I think that the number one question that we're all hearing um, from candidates is asking if we're virtual, if we're going into the office, when we're going to go back into the office. Um, you know, people want to know about their future and um, if we have a timeline in place and uh, what protocols we have in place. Um, I would say that's definitely, you know, the number one question and to definitely, um, for those of you on here that are, you know, thinking about hiring or um, having questions um, about the process, making sure that you have answers about your future to give, um, because that is definitely what people want to know. And maybe, you know, it's a matter of they'll start with being remote and then move into the office, hopefully in the future. Um, but I would say that's definitely the number one question that people are asking. And then kind of going off of that, what we should be asking that's, you know, different from the previous world before COVID is asking people and the candidates what they're comfortable with, you know, um, to be transparent and figure out right off the bat before um, somebody's first day, are you going to be comfortable coming into the office for your training and for gathering your laptop and equipment? Or would you prefer things to be sent to your house? Um, really just making sure that everybody is on the pa same page um, before that start date actually arrives um, and making sure that it's a comfortable situation for everybody um, before you get yourself, you know, into a bind that it's the Sunday before somebody starts and all of a sudden, you know, things have changed and you thought they were coming in the office and they're not. Um, so making sure that you have that plan, you know, laid out before, um, before sending out somebody's offer and figuring out their first day plans. Yeah, I agree. I think it's definitely helpful. And, you know, back to the previous slide, there's still so much uncertainty. We don't know. We don't, you know, for us specifically at Dominion Payroll, we don't have a, a date that we will all return back to the office. Um, we do know that we will be going back to the office where, um, you know, so I think for companies to, if you can kind of have a plan of, you know, maybe you are going to be 100% remote moving forward. Um, but for us at Dominion Payroll, we're not so something that we really do communicate to our all of our candidates is like CC said, asking, you know, of course, in the meantime, if they're comfortable coming in or if they don't want to come in, that's fine for the meantime. But moving forward, you know, we're, we're not going to be a remote company. And I know a lot of people over the last, you know, 11 months have a lot of people have gotten comfortable with remote, which is which is great for some organizations. And, um, you know, they've kind of shifted their mindset of. I think I want to be a remote employee and that's great, but, you know, just going back to the transparency piece of letting these candidates know. So, you know, in six months, you know, maybe if we're back in the office that there's not this big shock of, wait, I, I started out remote and now, now I have to come back in, back into the office five days a week. So yeah, I think those are, are definitely some of the top questions that have, have changed or have been brought into the, into the conversation. Yeah. And to, to and that, as as, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say to that end, you know, if you and your leadership team haven't thought through that yet, whether or not you're going to be a company that allows for, you know, in, in this sort of post pandemic world, as I, if I, if I may, um, not, not now, we're not there yet, but in the future, what, what, whenever we can say we're post pandemic, whether that's six months or eight months, 12 months, whatever start thinking now, like what are we as a company, um, what works best for our culture and our, you know, our, our job functions. If, um, if, if somebody wants to be remote because it's been working out for them and what makes more sense for their family or, or whatever, well, what do we say? And, um, you know, that's just a decision that you can just, that's obviously per company and per, per, per organization, but um, just be prepared now to, to answer those questions later. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, something to start thinking about along those lines is, uh, you know, coming up with, if you are doing a, um, a temporary remote situation, we have a, we now have a temporary remote policy in our handbook, and we've added a more specific telecommuting policy. So when, you know, we do go back into the office, we will allow employees to work, you know, one day a week right now is what the policy is. Maybe we'll change that, but, um, but also having this te temporary one based on, you know, a global pandemic or, you know, some, some kind of situation like that. So being prepared um, and start thinking about that ahead of time, you know, because hopefully sooner than later, the time will come where employees are gonna start wondering, you know, okay, we're, Kind of on our on our way out of this pandemic, what are what are we doing now? Right. Yep. Preparation is key because mm -hmm. you know I I mean we did a, a webinar yesterday on the vaccine, which is another thing you should be <laughs> planning for is your vaccine policy. Um, you know, but we just don't know really what you know. That's part of the frustration for everybody in, in during this time is that we just don't have an end date right now for for this pandemic um so planning ahead to the extent that you can for all of these things will you will thank yourself later uh, because something could change pretty quickly um you know i hope that it does if it doesn't that's fine too you'll be prepared either way all right so this we've, we've been talking about this a little bit but i just wanted to touch on it a bit more you know obviously depending on the nature of your work, some job just cannot be performed remotely. And I know Megan and Cece, you've hired a couple of people in the last couple of months. Um, like for instance, our pack out um, coordinator, that, that's a job that it, it's, it's essentially a, a job that can't be done at all remotely, correct? Correct, yep. So I'm assuming with, with her that you were, you know, were super clear about that and, um, you know, it's just something that she signed on for and she was aware of from the very beginning. Yeah, absolutely. She's, you know, somebody that we, in the initial conversation, just had to let her know that this position is in, in the office. Um, it cannot be done from home. It will, at this point in the, you know, foreseeable future, it it will never be done from home. Um, and it, it's, it's one of the few positions, so it's unique. You know, you have a, a company where 99% of the employees can can work remotely except this one person. Um, so yeah, so just really setting clear expectations um, and just laying it out for her and making sure that, you know, this individual was comfortable and able to come in every day and, and perform those job duties. And of course, letting them know, and I think we'll probably talk about this in a, in a future slide, but, you know, setting those, letting them know what, what things we've put in place to make sure that she does feel safe and that it is a safe envir environment for the employees that do have to go into the office. Yeah, for sure. And, and I know also too, that that can be, it can be a lonely position to be in if you're the only one going, well, she's not the only one who goes in, but it's definitely a skeleton crew. Mm -hmm. So making her feel supported, giving her the right tools and touch points um, and, you know, who to reach out to if she has a question. I think that's really important for your, if you have a skeleton crew going into the office, obviously health and safety is the first order of business, but then the second is how do you make them feel like they are, um, you know, engaged and supported and don't feel resentful that everybody else is at home and they're in the office. Yeah, and you know, that's a great point because something that, you know, this individual's manager has decided to do is she's in the office every day, you know, so she's she's supporting those her employee that, you know, the one individual in our company that does have to be in the office. So she's 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 there supporting her in person, um, you know, where they can can be safe, but she's there, um, you know, because it is for us a, a, a unique situation where it's just one person that has to be in there. So right. providing her for that additional support outside of just a, a computer screen. So on the flip side for, so, you know, 95% of our, our staff are working remotely, um, give or take. How do we, um, have you all been involved in the conversation around, how do I say this? Accountability, um, isolation issues, um, you know, what, what are you hearing? Like, how are you all 
and maybe you're not involved with this, this might be a better question for Shana, or maybe you are, but you know, when you're position, when all of a sudden everyone's working from home, obviously we have technology and tools and if everyone's very in interconnected in this company, if somebody, if somebody were to not do their job, it would be very apparent very quickly. Um, but, you know, but there's also the mental health issues and people just feeling, you know, it depends on your sort of inner wiring, right? Some people are like, this is the best. I can work from home. I don't have to ever see anybody ever again. And I'm totally <laughs> fine. And then other people like myself included, I get, you know, a little squirrely when I'm by myself all the time. And um, I find myself, you know, when I have days when I don't have a lot of of uh, team or Zoom's call, Zoom calls, I'm, I sort of create some because I need that human contact. So, and I also know that we, our departments, I believe all departments do um, ask their employees to put together like weekly status reports and sort of catalog what they've been doing, what their accomplishments have been, what their challenges have been, and that sort of rolls up to management so that they can, management can sort of see what people are grappling with because we just don't have that we don't have those water cooler conversations anymore where you can just drop into someone's office and vent about a difficult situation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's definitely um, being talked about, um, especially at the executive level. I think, especially over probably the last four or five months, you know, I think we've gone through different peaks um, and valleys through the last, the last 11 months um, where, you know, we were, we were all of a sudden just pushed into this remote setting and everybody's doing well. And then kind of, you know, and I think at some point, you know, people start to burn out and we're not surrounded by, um, by our teammates. We, I think, you know, you fall into this. Some of our departments are just so busy. They feel like they're taking on everything because they can't see what other people are doing. Um, so starting having just conversations, especially just check-in conversations. Actually, Cece and I just talked about this this morning that, um, you know, we're going to start doing just check-ins with employees and just kind of do a pulse check. Like, hey, how's it going? Where where do you need support? Where, where do you feel like things are like thriving for you? And so just to kind of get an overall feel of, of how they're doing. And I know that different members of the executive team have done that throughout the, the last 11 months as well. Um, and, you know, kind of going back to the, the um, kind of more metrics of, you know, what are you doing? Uh, you know, of course, we don't want to be a company who, where we're, where our employees feel like we're, they're being micromanaged or, or we're questioned what we're doing. So you do have to be kind of careful of how that is, um, how that, how we're asking employees um, to, to share that information. Um, but we just want to stay on top of it and make sure that, you know, we're providing everything that we need to be providing to employees, um, while they're at home, um, and separated from, from the rest of our, rest of our company. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. And I think that was a really good point about, cause we just came through our, our busiest time of year is what we call year end, which is December and January. And there are definitely some departments, um, I mean, all departments work really hard during that time, but there's a couple that are just, they just, and they know going into it, it's just gonna be, you know, a 60 hour week instead of a 40 hour week. And, um, but it can be in this situation, it can feel, it's like you said, they're normally we're in a big open floor plan. We take up one whole floor of a building and you can, everything's glass. And so you can see everybody, you can hear everybody and there's this energy or frustration, you know, and there's a big table full of snacks and, you know, and so you, you're all sort of all in the trenches together and now we don't have that. And so, um, you know, we, and one other thing that we do that we've done since the beginning is we have a used to be every day. Now it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have an 8, 15 AM company-wide phone call, which is a really great, great way for us to stay connected, learn about what other departments are doing, learn about what other uh, branch offices are doing in other states. Um, and just, you know, learn, I mean, I think I know more about the inner workings of our company now than I did before COVID because of that 8, 15 call. I know it's a labor of love because you have to actually come up with content for it three days a week, but, um, but I think for the most part, it's been a really great thing. And, and I'm sure when you guys are hiring, you probably mentioned these types of adaptations that we've made 
as a company during COVID to sort of show that we're, you know, trying to keep our cultural fabric really strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point, Leslie. And I think it's something that is definitely, um, I know that I personally try and reiterate a lot of the things that we're doing um, to candidates during my like first initial phone call with them. Um, because I think that sometimes what I was forgetting kind of at the beginning um, of helping with recruiting, like back in October, I had to take a step back and remember kind of how scary it must be for a candidate to be coming to join us. Um, my fiance actually just got um, a new job himself that he starts on March 1st. And I think that going into it, it's just a very intimidating thing, knowing that you're starting um, a position during a pandemic, you know, whether it's in the office or virtually, um, that there are going to be differences in the company. And so just really trying to be very, I mean, I know that we keep saying transparent, um, but really just putting yourself into the candidate's shoes and realizing um, that, you know, it's a lot probably more intimidating um, to them to be joining than for us who, you know, have been with the company since pre-COVID and kind of already knew um, each other a little bit, um, just again, making sure that they know that there are things that we're trying so hard to do so that they can get to know people and not feel like they're on an isolated island alone, because that's definitely when burnout is going to happen. And it's just also not the culture that Dominion Payroll has tried so hard. And I'm sure other companies, you know, are trying so hard to create that you don't want to just like totally go away because of this pandemic. So making sure that you're really trying your best to reiterate all of these new things that we've put into place that a new employee will be, you know, joining in on and getting to meet everybody, um, even though it's in a different weird way that we're not used to, um, it's still going to happen. And it's important for them to know that, you know, going in so that they're not as maybe nervous going into um, a new position during such weird, weird times. Yes, that's a really good point, Cece, because starting a new job is stressful in any, in any situation. So now it's even, there's several more layers on there. So that's a really um, good tip to just be transparent and lay out what they can expect. And then obviously keep those touch points and check-ins going. I've done, as part of my job for clients, I sometimes perform exit interviews. And there were a couple this year where the person had started in like April, which was a unfortunate timing. And there was a remote workforce and they didn't make it past like two months because they just were thrown in and they didn't feel, they didn't know who to go with questions. They didn't know what they didn't know. And um, I don't want to throw my client under the bus, but you know, the exit interviews are a really great way. I mean, it's, it's too often too late for that individual, but you can take that information and that feedback and you know make some changes so you can keep that attrition from happening hopefully to somebody else. Yeah, something that we've um, been doing so you know as we have new hires start, um, I think it's at the end of week two, we send an onboarding reflection survey. So asking our new hires for just honest feedback of what went well, what didn't go well, you know, if there was something missing, that would have been really helpful to know, um, you know, in their first couple of weeks. So that's been, it's so easy to do. Um, and, you know, it's nothing, it's only, you know, maybe 10, 10 or so questions for them to just go through and answer quickly. Um, but it's, it's really good feedback for us, because like I said, in the beginning, Cece and I are constantly revamping, you know, what recruiting and onboarding look like for Dominion payroll. So getting that feedback you know, up front, and then, you know, constantly doing more check-ins with them. And um, hopefully that will help, you know, with, with the attrition and, and not losing somebody and you're able to kind of change, change things more frequently, as opposed to finding out after somebody's already gone, um, when it's too late. I like that a lot. I was unaware you guys were doing that. That's great. Yeah, we just, we started not too, not too long ago. So it's, it's a new thing that we have we have brought on, but um, it's definitely helpful to get that feedback. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. That's a great idea. I would never, I probably wouldn't have thought of that. So great. Hopefully that's helpful for some of our listeners. 
Um, I'd included, I had to include a health and safety slide, and I know we've talked about this a couple times already, but um, it sounds like that we at Dominion Payroll are communicating our safety protocols to, to potential hires, and we recommend that you all do the same, um, particularly if you, like we said earlier, if you have positions that just cannot be performed remotely. Um, you know, and you might have new hires. Some people, you know, it's a spectrum. Some people are, are very cavalier about COVID and other people are not. Um, I think you should treat everybody equally and say, this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to, this is our commitment to keeping you safe. This is your commitment to keeping your teammates safe, you know, by wearing a mask and staying six feet away. Like the, the, set the expectations from the very beginning. Like this company is a company that takes this seriously. And we're not just checking off the boxes. We truly, we, we've been through a very long 11 months. We want this to end. We're all working on this. You know, we're getting, we're looking at the long game here. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I, I always recommend, you know, being like these, these, these ladies have said a bunch of times on this call, like transparency is key. Um, and if they ask you, if they say to you, you know what, I, I hear you, but I don't see someone over there wearing a face mask then be prepared to answer that question. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's one thing to have a policy in place, but you really need to actually live that policy day to day. So is there yeah, anything else you guys wanna add? Definitely important to make sure that they're aware of like any of the, the policies that you, your company have uh, implemented uh, throughout COVID. Um, part of our onboarding process, when we do hire somebody, they we have a COVID addendum. Uh, they have to sign off on that. They have to sign off on a, a return to workplace form, you know, agreeing that if they're experiencing symptoms or if they've come in contact with somebody that they know not to come into the office. Um, so all of that is done, you know, communicated prior to their first day, but all of that is, is documented and signed on their first day as well. Yeah, that's smart. And, and, you know, making them feel like, cause I've spent a lot of time this year and I know you all have too, working with people who have disruptions in their workforce because of a COVID a scare or, out, or an actual confirmed outbreak. Um, you know, and so you need to not only give new hires the policy um, and the expectations and also who, who do they go to when they feel like they've had a exposure or a scare or you know, something that they need to um, talk about and then how will they be treated you know, like when they come to you and say that, are you going to be like, oh, man, really? Like, what did you do to get, you know, what did, did you go out last weekend? <laughs> or are you going to be like, okay, well, here's the procedure we have in place. Here's what we're going to do. And then go from there. And, and everybody should have that same exact answer. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And going back to the kind of what questions are we hearing? That is actually a question that I've, I've received more recently. Like, what happens if I, what happens if I did get COVID, you know, what are, what are your procedures and processes there? So really setting the stage that, you know, if this happens, this is the process you go to HR, it's confidential, you know, and there's sick leave options. There's, you know, all, all these options. So continue to make them feel safe and not, not in a judgmental way or anything like that, just, and, and keep it very, like this is, this is how it is and this is what we do. So it is the same and consistent for every single person. Right, yeah, and confidentiality is key. Anyone who listens to my webinars knows that I'm always talking about that, but <laughs> it's definitely key. It's definitely still a thing. It's in 2021, you need to make sure people don't feel like there's some sort of pariah if they have an issue, COVID related or not. And especially if they're new, you know, cause I've had a, couple clients who were fortunate enough to hire new people in 2020 and then like a couple of them in their first week had to go and quarantine and it just you know that's why those sick leaves were were there and there's no waiting period you could hire someone yesterday and they could take ffcra sick leaves tomorrow if and that's the whole reason why they exist so mm -hmm. that's yeah. my little plug for that <laughs> All right, so communicate your safety protocols for sure and then keep communicating them after they're hired and make sure they feel comfortable if they have an issue. All right, so I know this topic is really near and dear to, to you all and you've been working a lot on it. Um, we've talked about it a little bit already, but once someone's on board, 
we talked about a survey, but what else have you guys been um, doing for new hires to make them feel welcome and connected and um, appreciated? Yeah, so once we hire um, and onboard a new employee, um, we've always had this in place even prior um, to COVID. Obviously, it was a little bit different when we were in the office, um, but we're doing the same thing. We create um, a three to four day schedule for their first week for Monday through Wednesday or Thursday, um, depending on how long it takes for um, a new employee to meet all of our executive team. Um, and to also, you know, shadow some people in their department um, and just really set aside times, pretty much block off their whole entire schedule for three to four days um, so that they constantly have something to do. They don't feel like they're, you know, just twiddling their thumbs, wanting to ask what they should do. Um, so we've always done that. Um, how we're doing it now, again, is a little bit differently because it's all being done um, virtually on the computer, even if they are, you know, choosing to do their training in the office. Um, they're still meeting with the different managers um, on our internal teams. Um, and so Megan and I are actually setting up their calendars before they actually start. So the week before um, an employee starts, we block off their calendar um, with a bunch of different invites so that they can just go in and join the meetings as they come. Um, and again, I think that this just helps prevent you know, them feeling like, I don't know what to do. I don't know anyone. I don't know who to ask. What do I do? Um, Cause that's always an uncomfortable situation for um, especially a new hire. Um, so we go ahead and do the orientation for them for the first week um, and just have it all, you know, remotely on teams so that they have something to fill all of their time for the first couple of days. Yeah, and these these meetings with, you know, the different department heads are really a way for, you know, their casual conversations, you know, a first first couple of days at a new job, a first week can be really intimidating, it can be exhausting, it's so much information, so many new people, um, so we try not to throw them just right into whatever work they're coming on to do, right, we want them to experience Dominion payroll, we want them to get to know people, we want them to just kind of learn more about the organization as a whole, so, um, you know, I think it's really important that these conversations, I always tell these people that, you know, these conversations are super casual, ask as many questions, it's just an opportunity for you to get to know the different department heads, the executive team, um, and learn a little bit more about what they do, just at a very high level, so it's not too overwhelming, um, and then, you know, week two is typically when they start to, to get more into the, the actual workload, but um, you know, and, and setting up, especially now that we're virtual and, you know, fortunately, you know, a lot of our people, our new hires have been able to safely come into the office, at least for their first day. But after that, you know, making sure that they are set up um, successfully with, with their laptops and being able to get on these video calls and, and filling their time. So like Cece said, they're not not feeling like, okay, I'm sitting at home now. What do I do? I don't know who to reach out to. I can't just walk over to this person and ask a question. I don't even know their names. Um, so really just being intentional about filling their calendars, but not with overwhelming, you know, daunting tasks, just casual conversations. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've met with a bunch of new hires recently and, uh, or throughout, and they're always just so wide-eyed <laughs> at first. <laughs> week and I know that they have there's so much information that they're they're taking on um but I do I do know that they appreciate the the connection and we keep it casual and um you know later on they'll learn more but we keep it pretty high level during that first conversation hmm. how are you guys doing i9s right now are they coming in with physical documents that first day um, if, if they're coming into the office, um, they do bring their physical copies, but of course, you know, we have, um, offices in other locations that we're also hiring for. And so we're taking those, um, usually through, you know, um, virtually, um, they'll, you know, scan it in, send me a picture, uh, through email. And so, um, you know, we're still trying to, to do them as much as we can and, you know, get those documents in person if we can. Um, but, you know, some, some of the stuff is, is out of our, our control right now with, with people being virtual. So we are, we are taking those, um, 
And I, I think it was just extended earlier this month to the end of March for, um, to be able to do that. So, which I'm sure it will continue to. Yeah, they keep, they keep doing like these 30 day extensions. I know, <laughs> yeah. And it's, it, it's as a sidebar, because I'm an HR nerd, I wonder if that process just in general in the 21st century with so many different remote workers, whether it's pandemic related or not, if that process is going to change a little bit, but. Yeah, I imagine it could. We'll see what Homeland Security decides to do. <laughs> okay, and then I think this might be my last slide. Um, this is an ongoing engagement. I know we, we continue to touch on this theme. Um, and Megan and, and Cece have already shared that they, they've, they're gonna launch a program to do more touch points. Um, like we shared, we, we do an 815 AM company-wide call Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays which is a great way to keep people engaged. Um, I know department heads are encouraged by leadership to have, um, and we have a great VP of HR, um, all of our, we report to, all three of us report to, um, who's been really, really, um, in my opinion, <clears throat> um, just led an effort to really, to make managers feel more like managers. And, or let me rephrase that. To, to keep managers of, of top of mind that they are running a department full of people and it's not just about the numbers. And so that people focus has been, it's important in any era, but certainly now it's even more important. And I'm guilty of it too. I get so busy. I forget to check in with my team. And, um, you know, one of my teammates lives in West Virginia. I mean, she's not even close to being, I couldn't even see her if I wanted to in person. Um, so, you know, I just need to be, I think we've done a good job as a company of nurturing our managers and starting there um, and making sure that they remember that they have a team full of people, whether they're new or they've been here for 10 years, they still have needs. And it's not just about, yes, it's about getting the job done and making sure our clients are happy, but we also want to make sure that everyone feels supported and has the skills that they need and, or just, you know, if they're having a bad day, have a, have a place to, you know, have a, someone to talk to. Um, so I, I just feel like as, as, as an employee of this company, we've done a really great job. I think we did it, we did it well before COVID and, and maybe a silver lining of COVID is that we now are doing it better. Yeah, I agree. I think it's opened our eyes a little bit to maybe some of the gaps that we did have and um, some ways that we could shift it. Um, you know, I, th I think especially in COVID, it's easy to, you know, isolate yourself and kind of you're not seeing these people on a day to day basis. So it's easy to, you know, kind of just, uh, oh, I'll, I'll catch them later. I'll send them a message later and then 10 things more pop up and you forget. So, um, so I think it's really easy to, to do that. So, you know, setting our setting up our managers with with tips and tools on on how to stay engaged with with their team and making sure that that every employee does have the have what they need to be successful and feel supported. And I just realized that my West Virginia employee Ashley is on the call today. Hi Ashley. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Hopefully she's like, wait a minute, she doesn't actually check in with me that often. <laughs> so I think hopefully I've been better about that. Um, but in any case, um, yeah, and so whatever works for your your organization, um, you know, and we don't pretend to have it all worked out. We're continually evolving and, and figuring out the right the right things to do. Um, and you know, if 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 you are able to do some things in person um, safely, then that might be a that might work better for your company. Um, maybe the jobs all have to be done in person. You know, maybe your your you know that's remote work is not even on the table for you. In which case, you can adapt some of these uh, some of these tips to your particular situation. Um, and you know, it could be that you have a hybrid situation too, and you can be creative around that as well. Um, but I just think be, the visibility piece of it. You know, again, our eight fifteen call it's visibility. I mean, it's just, it is, it's transparency and visibility, it's management. Um, and people sometimes have technical issues and it's funny and their dog walks through and, you know, or there's a baby crying. It just, it's visibility, it's humanity. Um, 
it's reminding people why we're here. Um, it also is educational. Like we, 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 um, I said before, I know more now about the company, how the company works than I did before COVID because we have our CFO come on and talk very openly about, you know, uh, some things, uh, operational things that, that I never knew before. Um, and, and I really appreciated that. So whatever works for your organization, whatever you feel comfortable doing, and, and it might, you might step out of your comfort zone a little bit. You know, we have two owners here at Dominion Payroll. One of them is super extroverted and loves people and the other one's a bit quieter. And so, you know, the extroverted one tends to be the one that's on the 815 call a bit more because that's his wheelhouse. That's his happy place. Um, but, you know, the other one is certainly behind the scenes and, and, and making sure that the, um, the company is run smoothly. So, um, you know, everyone has their strengths and, um, you know, now's the time to continue to work with your leadership team um, to come up with new ideas and keep things fresh or, or start something new. Um, and if it doesn't work, then pivot and try something else. Yeah, I was going to say, I think one thing, you know, over this last year as somebody being in HR, you, I'm sure a lot of you can relate is we've had to become very flexible and, and change so much of what we do and how we do it. And I don't see that changing soon, right? You know, once, you know, more of the vaccine comes out and people start coming back to work, it's going to be another, another shift and a change in policies and new things to think about. So I think just as you're thinking about your recruiting process and onboarding process, um, you know, as long as you go go in with um, an open mind, a, a flexible mind, and be prepared to change at any moment, um, because you know things are just constantly evolving. So I think you know over the last eleven months, our our process, like I said, has changed a number of times, and and will continue to change. Um, so just be open to and and listen to your to your employees' feedback. I think that's really important because. You know, we're not seeing it from the same from the same view or lens that they are coming in with. Um, so, really important to to hear their feedback and be prepared to to take that and and make positive changes from it. For sure. Well, listeners, if you have any questions, please key them in. We'll hang out for a couple more minutes. I know we're getting close to the um, twelve o'clock hour, and I want to be respectful of, of everyone's time. I will mention a couple trends that I've seen from my client on the client side. Uh, for clients that I do HR for, a lot of them are um, implementing online training programs and not just around skills, but also more emotional intelligence um, type contents where they're really trying to provide tools to their team around, um, you know, the, they may have done it in person before COVID. Now they're just, you know, now they're adapting it to an online training. Um, but I've been putting together some curricula for, for clients and more and more of them are asking, yes, they, they want to be in compliance. They want to make sure people have, you know, anti-harassment training and, uh, you know, those types of things. But they're also adding on some really interesting modules around leadership and management styles. And um, like I mentioned, um, emotional intelligence, how to handle stress. Um, so that could be an option too, you know, it, and hopefully you know, it's pretty low cost, I, I think, to, to do that. And we're happy to help if you're one of our clients, but if not, um, there are certainly other options out there. Um, and that's one way you can keep people engaged. The other thing we haven't mentioned on this call is um, performance reviews. Uh, we do them here. And uh, we've, I think, you know, the last year, we've sort of tightened that process up and made it a bit more um, clear for managers and employees alike. So now might be a good time for your company to think about that if, you, if that's something that you need to dust off and sort of revamp. I know it's one more thing to add to your list, but it's a great retention tool. There are different ways to do it. It doesn't always have to be um, the same way or, you know, there are different, different types of review systems now um, out there. Some are, some are on a rating scale, some are more, more narrative. There's a mix of both. And so I'm seeing a lot of clients really start to put some thought into that or re revive it um, from, you know, sort of a dormant state. So, um, you know, if you have, if you're one of our clients, our ISOL platform can be a place where that lives. If not, you can use technology for that or you can do it the old fashioned way and use paper. But either way, it's a great way to keep people um, connected and have, you know, constructive conversations. 
All right, well, this is a quiet group today. No questions, no anecdotes. Um, hopefully that means that we have given you some food for thought. Uh, if you think of something at the uh, after we sign off today, we have our email address here at questions at dominionpayroll.com. Uh, as most of you know, that's sort of our hotline for COVID related questions of any stripe, um, today's topic or not. And we'll route that to the right person and get you an answer. And Megan and Cece, I'm so grateful that you guys took the time out to do this today. I know you guys are so busy and you just doing a bang up job. Um, I'm really proud to be on the same team with you all. And I think I'm really proud of our HR department in general um, for all the work that you've done. I don't know how you fit it in. Um, I know you both have small puppies running around and um, you're wearing a lot of different hats. I can't believe no one's barked during this call. I was going to say we have done really good collectively. <laughs> Just one cat. Yeah. No. yeah. One know. cat appearance. So thank you for having us, Leslie. It was fun yeah, um, thank you. to do this. Do something different. Oh, you know what? Watch out, though, because I'm going to ask you guys again. <laughs> so be careful what you wish for. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone have a great afternoon wherever you are, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye, Bye guys.